Hi, grade twos. Today we're going to do an experiment where we talk about buoyancy. I've got some modeling clay here and I've got some tin foil and we're going to look at how we can make those more buoyant or less buoyant depending on their shape. Um, so what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to make this modeling clay sink by putting it into a certain shape and then I'll try to make it float by changing the shape. And same with the tin foil. I'll try to make the tin foil sink and I'll try to make it float um, by changing its shape. So first what I do, of course, because I'm a good scientific writer, is I take a moment to write down my predictions of what shapes will sink and what shapes, shapes will float. So I'll go and do that right now. What I think is going to happen in the experiment is that the clay and tin foil will float if I shape them like a canoe. And then I also wrote that I think they will both sink if I squish them into a ball shape. So that's my prediction for what I think is going to happen. All right, so I've recorded my predictions. Now it's time for me to do the experiment and then I'll write down my observations either during or after. So I've got this modeling clay. First of all, let's try to make the modeling clay float. So I'm going to try to make a shape where this modeling clay is going to float in my water. All right, so I've made my uh, modeling clay sort of into sort of a boat, a canoe shape. It's maybe not as oval or as long as a canoe is, but I've done my best and I've tried to seal up any cracks. So let's see if it floats in the water, if it's really buoyant. And it is. So I've chosen a shape for my uh, modeling clay that does float in the water. Now let's try to make it sink. Okay, so I've squished my modeling clay into a ball here. I've really tried to squish it as tightly packed as I can make it. We'll put it in the water and let's observe what happens. So it sank right to the bottom. So again, by telling the sh changing the shape of the object, we can determine how buoyant it is. If it floats, if it's very buoyant, or if it sinks, not buoyant. Let's do the same with our tin foil now. So I'm gonna start by trying to make my tin foil float. So I'm gonna change the shape a little bit. And my tin foil sort of boat shape definitely floats. I could probably even put a load in here and it could carry it. It's quite buoyant. Now my job, of course, is to make it sink. I'm going to make it less buoyant. Okay, so I've squished my tin foil into a little ball. Let's observe what happens. It still floats. So I think what we know is even though I've smushed it into a ball, the tin foil is still pretty buoyant. There might even be some air in here, but if I squish it as hard as I can, it still floats in the water. Now I'm just going to try one last shape. I'm just going to have a flat piece of tin foil and I'm going to put it in on its side and we'll see if I can get it to sink this time. Let's take a look. So when I just put it on its side, it totally sinks to the bottom. There was no air in it. It was a shape where it could just sink down. There was no air being held in it. So I finally was able to find a shape for the tin foil. So like any good scientist now, I need to write down what I observed in my experiment. So what I've written here is, the clay and foil floated when they were shaped like a canoe. When they were shaped like a ball, the clay sunk, but the tin foil floated. When the tin foil was flat and placed into the water on its side, it sunk to the bottom of the bin. So I've written down all the important things that I observed, and then I made sure to do a little illustration to show my observations as well. All right, so we've recorded our observations. We're done the experiment. Thanks a lot for watching, grade twos. Bye.